Welcome to lecture 4B. We're going to talk today about selective nature of listening, barriers to effective listening, and strategies for effective listening. Here's an important word from the Holy Scriptures. He who gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame to him. So here we see the scripture even tells us that speaking before listening is not only bad, but shameful. I want this to sink into you. Do not blot out stuff. Do not just jump into conclusion. Listen, you've been given two ears and one mouth. Mili ears, one mouth. But we don't even listen with the ears only. We listen with our whole body. That's what I said in the other case. So you have about seven, eight senses to listen with. Do not quickly jump into speaking unless you understand. I see very many of you rushing to ask me questions. There are and some questions which I find are important, I'll answer. But if you find that I'm not answering, I want you to think, reflect, you know, work your brain. Your brain is a muscle. So let that word of God sink into you because this is very important. Listening. Listening to the teachers. Listening to your parents. Listening to God. He's the Father Almighty. Omnipotent. Omnipresent. He has all power. So very important. This comes from the scripture. In any given situation, no two listeners will process information in exactly the same way. And you know why? This is because selective perception is what takes place. People pay attention selectively to certain messages while others, or while ignoring others. So, young man, young woman, your sense of, for example, beauty, for your sense of what you value will definitely be different from somebody else. You can go to a movie, you can read the same book, you can attend the same lecture, but I'll tell you, believe you me, you all have different perception. They'll be differing. So do not fight over that. Somebody has got to really exactly see the way you're seeing. Somebody has got to exactly listen to what you're saying. Look at these two guys. One is looking at the lady and saying, well, this one is more beautiful than the other. Let me tell you, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And once you get that, then do not be conforming to the other ways of other people. Your beauty might be very different from somebody else because of what? Selective perception. We perceive our filters, the way we see things, the way we listen to things, very different. We are unique. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you remember my first lecture, and that's why you need to actually be a unique person, communicate in your unique way. I don't see why everybody gets into the WhatsApp and you all communicate in the same exact way. Conformity is not what we were meant to be. Abnormality from the word normal. All of us want to be normal. We want to conform, which is not nature. Nature is not like that. We cannot perceive everything the same. So I want to repeat, when I see people aping each other, then you know, you're not going to bring out your talent. Eps, you know eps? Eps are the ones that you find in the forest. They don't think. You raise up your hand, they also raise up their hand. They, you shout, they shout. Do not get into that, especially now at university. Try to be yourself because we perceive things differently. Selective perception. What's the selective nature of listening? There are three factors that affect our selective process or listening is a discriminative process. It is affected by three factors. One, people pay attention to what they hold important. I'll explain more to that. People pay attention to information that touches on their experiences and background. And finally, people sort and filter new information on the basis of what they already know. All right. Let's look at the first one. Listening is a discriminating process. Remember, it's an active process, all right? It's not like hearing, which is passive. It's a discriminating process where people pay attention to what they hold to be important. Hey, young man, here's a tip for you, all right? If you want to be 
to the young man, all right? Where I say people pay attention to what they hold to be important. You want to actually motivate a lady, you want to keep talking to a lady, a lady will be most motivated to listen to you if she feels what you are talking about is interesting, funny, and of value to her. Remember, people pay attention to what they hold to be important. So when you are talking to a lady and you are a fan of Ma Manchester United or you are a fan of Arsenal, then you are asking the lady, wewe ni fan wa maniu ama wa Arsenal? I mean, look at that. Asking a question is, is, is a good way to get your foot in the door. But asking her, are you a fan of Manchester United or Arsenal, is surely going to close your doors and windows. Okay, there are some ladies who like football, but not as many. What I'm trying to say is, do not rumble about what you like to somebody who might not share your liking. You know, football might not be important to me. Uh, tennis might be the one that is important to me. Uh, going dancing might not be important to me. So, first to be able to also capture somebody's attention, you as a communicator, try to understand what is important to them. Because we perceive and filter. If we find that it's not important to us, we won't listen to you. So you'll just rumble and rumble. And you can be very lonely in Taita Taveta University. Some of uh, the students I've seen can stay here four years alone, single, jailed in their loneliness. It's not a, it's a laughing matter. It's not a laughing matter, but I'm just trying to tell you. One tip, okay, people pay attention to what they hold to be important. What do you think ladies hold to be important? Everybody likes about movies. Everybody likes to talk about music. Everybody likes to talk about culture, but not everybody is into your thing. Not everybody is a football mania. Not everybody likes to drink. Not everybody smokes bang. Not everybody goes to the salon. Right? Secondly, people pay attention to information that touches on their experiences and background. So you might be an engineer, a computer engineer, and the lady asks you, hey, I really want to know more about it. Then you go, you know, I'm a computer engineer. I do coding. Coding is computer language used to develop apps websites and so who wants to know i mean huh? is that a lady maybe has never known even about the computer does not even know what is coding and you you're rambling on and on and oh i'm a rocket science oh i'm a mining engineer you know i mine rocks and there are igneous rocks there are volcanic rocks cut the crap all right and this is not only for ladies i'm giving this example because i know there are some young men that i want to uh, give them some tips, but this applies to everybody, okay? Try to see what really is the background of this person, what touches to their... So, so that when you start even the communication process, you know, at least you can have them listening. That's why even in teaching, we don't start rocket science and we go straight. No, we start from where you know and we move slowly. So people pay attention to information that touches on the experiences and backgrounds. My man, when you go out with her and keep talking about things that are totally foreign and unfamiliar to her world, chances are she'll either zone out or switch off. So you'll rumble, rumble, and she'll just say, libonzo, sasa nini And you keep wondering, why am I lonely? Why? Because understand, unless what you are saying does touches to my experiences and background then i won't listen and finally people sort and filter new information on the basis of what they already know we move from the known to the unknown according to learning theory all new concepts are understood as analogies to previous concepts we try to understand new information by comparing it with what we already know so that's the selective nature of listening this helps you also as a communicator to understand those three aspects. Don't start something or don't start saying something to somebody if you have not started from the known. All right? If you want to tell somebody about pizza, which they have never seen, you can start telling them, do you know of chapati? Then think about a chapati with rubber bands that you actually eat and pull. Huh? You eat and pull. That makes a good picture of, you know, pizzas. All right? From the known to the unknown i know my diagram is interesting but it's from the known to the unknown 
So listening, focused, purposeful listening isn't possible unless we recognize and overcome barriers to listening, right? Let us look at each of the barriers to effective listening. What are these barriers? Okay, here's a list of the barriers. Barriers to effective listening. One, prejudgment. Two, listening distraction. Three, script writing and defense listening. Four, laziness and overconfidence. Five, cultural barrier, barriers. Six, social media. One, prejudgment. What is prejudgment? People have the tendency to filter what they want to hear and what they dislike hearing. However, these filters that we put on people create a barrier to listening. One of such filters is prejudgment. We look at somebody and say, that one doesn't look like a lecturer. Oh, that one doesn't look like a professor. Oh, that one doesn't look like I want to listen to that person. No, I'm brought up that we don't listen to ladies. Oh, that woman looks like she is actually a loose woman. I'm not going to listen to her. Prejudgment. Prejudgment. That man looks like a drunk. That man looks... That's prejudgment. It's a very big barrier to not only listening, but to actually communication with others, to also relating with others, also working with others. You're going to be working in groups. Prejudgment will make your world very small because you either be working with... The, your own kinsmen and that's why my groups are actually saying you have to have the face of Kenya you have to work with somebody you don't know this world you are born alone you'll go alone your brother is just that your mother has told you who your brother is or who your sister is it's just that you've lived with them that's only what it makes but remember if you remain with your brother or your sister or your village mate, then your world is very very small and you'll actually end up going to heaven or hell and I think it will be hell because you lived a very small life. The talent that God gave you cannot actually come out if you prejudge people. If you're actually walking, only walking with those who you know, only greeting those who you know. Even the good book says you are not different from the pagans. If you greet those you know, you are no longer better than the pagans if you work with only those you know. And this comes from prejudice. It brings problem in listening, okay? Can't judge a book by its cover, you've heard about that. So prejudgment, it is difficult to listen to people we have already judged that we don't like. For various reasons, only we can justify. Either because they are black, either because they are white, either because they are ladies, either because they are men, either because they come from a certain ethnic group, either because they are tall, they are short. The reason is yours. We therefore block out all the information that these people speak. The tendency to ignore people is der derived from within. So look into yourself, young girl, young man. Do you have prejudgment? It's a big barrier to listening. Within the same uh, category of uh, prejudgment is biased listening. The person hears only what they want to hear, typically misinterpreting what the other person says based on stereotypes and other biases often very evaluative in it not good listening because you are biased you might think for example only uh you want to hear and this bias is uh, it's not very good people will want to hear if uh, there's a kid who has come and is white and there is a black professor they might even want to hear to the white the mzungu kid the bias bias is almost similar to prejudgment and involves the decision to put some information on the acceptable side and keep others on the dislike side. People tend to like or to respect men more than women, which is very sad. And that's why we need to work hard and make sure the ladies see that they're included. Ladies also, you need actually to step up to the plate. Do not think that it's only the men who can do it. That's a wrong notion. Secondly, listening distraction. A listening distraction is anything that competes for your attention, that you are trying to give something. It can be external to the audience. This could become from the traffic outside the building, student conversing in the hallway, or a room that is stifling hot or very cold, or maybe they are just cockroaches in the room, or there are rats in the room. That is external uh, distraction. They could also be internal hunger, laziness. Another kind of interference is internal and comes from within your audience rather from the outside. Huh? 
action. Perhaps one of your listeners is hungry and may be so distracted by the hunger pangs that she doesn't pay attention to your speech or what you're saying. So if you are hungry, that could affect your listening. If you are thirsty, if you are sick, if you are tired, if you are fatigued, all those, those are internal distractions. As a speaker, you must try to hold your listeners' attention despite these various kinds of interference. So, listening distraction, another one of them is listening distraction. This can be external, internal. Third one, script writing. What is script writing? According to a hair ETL, script writers are individuals who do not focus on the speaker and are thinking about what they rather than the speaker will say next. You are actually rehearsing answers or you are writing a script. The aspect of script writing means you are trying to write, you have your own script you are trying to write, or you want to listen to some particular thing. So you are not open-minded. That's basically what it means. Script writers, they think about what they and not the speaker will say next. Huh? He would have said this. I think he should have said this. Okay. It also uh, very related to defensive listening. Defensive listening occurs when we sense that our attitudes and opinions are being challenged. We don't want change. Change is a big issue. When I tell students, hey, the, what you're writing on the wall is actually gibberish. What you're actually writing, I cannot understand. We don't want to change. Okay? Defensive listening, all you are actually doing. Some call me names, some think that I want to be respected. That one doesn't faze me because, hey, I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job, okay? But I know young people, right? They can do that. I've seen very many comments and I keep seeing them and I say, wow, this is the same. Young men, ni wale wale too. Hmm? Defensive listeners, defensive listeners decide either they would not that, they decide either that they would not like what the speaker is going to say or that they know better. Huh? They do not want to see, they, they just don't want to hear what Dr. Mjomba will say. Eh? They are told this is gibberish. They just don't want to hear that. Huh? They, are, they are told, you know, you have to speak Queen's English. They don't want to hear that. Or you want to speak American English. You know, they don't want to hear that's defensive listeners. And there are many. Okay? And I'm not going to work too hard to change you. you know? Change is the only constant. And you know, from the college, we'll get those who will have changed. There are some, the way they came in, they go out. Sometimes you can even think garbage in, garbage out. If you are ready to change, you will change. But defensive listening will, not, will make you not change. Because if you have an attitude, you're told something and you don't want to listen, then it's sad for you. This usually occurs when listeners sense that their attitudes or opinions are being challenged. When you find yourself script writing or listening with a defensive attitude, try waiting for the speaker to finish before formulating your own arguments in your mind. Okay. Ha! Huh. There you go. Laziness is the fourth and overconfidence. This is straightforward. Close related to defensiveness is laziness and overconfidence. This can manifest in several ways. Confidence. Either you expect too little from the speakers, ignore more important information, or display an arrogant I know. Eh, eh, the Otajua who do it, if you've heard that. But many people, pre and I wonder, if you know, for example, I see a lot on the wall and some look like you already know, so what have you come to do? Or why should you even be in my class if you already know? You know, doesn't make sense. So when you do that, you're actually doing either arrogant attitude or you're having overconfidence. Eh? Lest you discover that you missed important information, okay? Never assume that you already know what a speaker will say. Huh? Don't be overconfident. It's not good to have no confidence, but don't be overconfident. Fifth, culture role barriers. Differences in dialect or accents. There are people who have a problem with the R and L. Right, light. Election. Or if you talk about railway, okay, that can be, uh, if some speaker has that accent, you can have a problem actually listening because of that. Americans also, sometimes the way they, they have an accent, you can have somebody like also from 
uh, some ethnic uh, where they actually remove the B and they have P. Word choice, even physical appearance can serve as barriers to listeners, okay, nonverbal cues. Don't think all the signs. When you call somebody here, uh, you actually have your arm straight and your fingers calling. You never know how other people call other person. You don't know how people actually express maybe appreciation in other places. The Japanese will actually bow when they greet each other, right? The, uh, Indians will do namaste, non-verbal cues, those are called. And even the word choices, okay? Most gestures and non-verbal cues are culture-specific. Hear that one, culture-specific, rather than universal, and this can throw a listener off. And that's why we talk about intercultural communication. Communication is so vast. And when people say, well, I keep talking, I've been talking all my life so I can communicate rubbish, bulldogash, baloney. Communication is very, very complicated. Use of language, use of non-verbal, use of culture specific, okay? If you go to Lamu, that's when you'll know you don't know Kiswahili. When you go to England, that's when you'll know you don't know English. When you go to Spain, if you have learned to Spain, you won't know, you'll actually understand, really, I don't know Spain, because of culture specific. There, you're talking with people who are actually immersed in the culture. Another barrier which has become very common, social media is another barrier to listening. Very, very destructive. Keeping their phones off, look at what that shows you. People have gone out, these are young people, they've gone out for a death. But what are they doing? They're still on social media. They, they have no meaningful conversation. And more and more I'm experiencing and seeing this is a fertile area for research. No wonder we don't have uh, meaningful, healthy relationships. And young people now, especially the men, they have to get drunk before they can actually have fun, quote unquote, or with the ladies. We used to meet the ladies in the uh, village. You, you took nothing, you just got talked for hours on end, we'll help, uh, we'll pick firewood together, we'll even go pick berries, we'll go swim in the cool waters of Mrangi River. I mean, and I'm not saying we can go back there, but also you can minimize the use of social media when you are with your friend and you're actually trying to know each other. Keep the phone away. Try to stay an hour, two, without checking your phone, without WhatsApping. Young people have such a need for social media because of the instant and colorful feedback it gives that they often become bored during real conversation, resorting to their phones. I think you, are, you get what I'm saying. Some people feel actually naked, they feel hollow, they feel something is missing if they don't have their phone because they want to resort to the social media, but it's a very destructive device when it comes to listening. Okay. Extensive use of social media affects your listening skills and quality of interpersonal relationship. It also impoverishes your English language skills. I've said it, I'll keep saying it. Some of you have a big problem speaking English. And I've told you, language is practice, practice, pass, practice, right? If you just don't know English and you think if you want to do engineering, it's all taught in in, in English, yeah, there's nothing that's going to be taught there in gibberish, what you're writing in WhatsApp. And I've told you, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. I cannot repeat enough. So, well, it's your choice. And many, many. You know why this world, people actually fail? It's because you conform. You don't... We copy. The exam of the world is such that being yourself is the pass mark. But all of, all of us start with the faith because we want to be the same, we copy. And that's why most of us will end up with our talents, with the companies we have to start, with the books we have to write, all will go into the grave. Why? Epping. Nobody wants to be different. You are afraid to be ridiculed. You are afraid of peer pressure. Be yourself. Your destiny is not tied to any person. So when I tell you, practice your English. And if you are good in English, we go to Spanish. Huh? Es, Espanol, para mí, estudiar. Huh?
quiero esta noche bueno vista huh? it's on social media sites like facebook twitter and instagram have created a new language of their own i call it squiggles gibberish shenanigans all right that's the assignment there watch the video carefully as a group discuss the contents of this video in one paragraph of not less than 80 words and not more than 100 words highlight the content of the video the paragraph will be written in continuous prose not points on my youtube channel i get i get questions all the time where do we put that comment huh? youtube channel where the video is there's a comment section don't send it through email don't uh, actually uh, ask me whether you bring it through whatsapp or what post the paragraph in the comment section before midnight this coming sunday and make sure to write your group's name i have not been checking the midnight but today because i gave those who are actually let in registration time I'll be checking time when you actually sign it. Anything signed after midnight or any comment brought after midnight, from now on, I want to consider. I'll consider the rest, even if it came a minute later, but from today on or from midnight, our deadline is today for the latecomers and everybody else, because we are tightening. We want to be better. We want to be as perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. We have to tighten the news. We have to become better. All right, so let's turn to strategies to effective listening. We looked at the barriers. How do we become better listeners, okay? One, be open-minded. Two, do not prejudge, avoid distraction. Set listening goals. Uh, laziness and overconfidence. I think these ones I got from cultural barriers, social media. We'll see how we'll overcome them, right? guess where I have them I must have done them correctly all right be open-minded let go of assumption when coming into a listening occasion don't assume don't judge anybody be open be open to the possibility you do not have a complete grasp of the problem before you start to help the client being open also includes being able to come up with many different ways to look at a client's problem creatively considering different options, ideas, strategy, and cause of action. I'm talking about client in this case because, you know, you're going to the world of work. Most of us will get into the workplace. I had said one thing that is the poorest in Kenya is customer service. And we are all out there to serve. I know most of you must have looked at TTU and you think the customer service is real poor. I'll leave you to judge there. But Listening is, being open-minded is the beginning for good customer service. Open-minded, listen to your customer. Wow, can I help you? Don't have pre don't judge and think. That's a stupid question. That's a stupid, okay? Egoistic people, all right? You see somebody has already judged just because they're doing laptops. Do not prejudge people. I've already been prejudged that, hey, He's harsh. Oh, he wants to be respected. Oh, he's thinking that he's the best Malim. Go ahead. You do it. I don't care. I'm here to do my job. I'm, I'm going to repeat. I'm just here to do my job. Your judgment does not really affect me. Yeah, but it's not, I'm, I'm trying to teach you. Don't, don't go for that, okay? You won't learn anything from me or from any other Malim if you think or oh, you keep prejudging people. Because you'll remain in your village mentality, and that's sad. It's going to be sad. Okay. Be open-minded. Do not prejudge. Overcoming prejudice while listening. Respect the other person for his or her knowledge and skills, irrespective of the person's background. Make conscious efforts to take charge of your thoughts. Consciously avoid taking an I know what he or she is going to say attitude while the other person is speaking. We have people who say, okay, okay, I know. They already interrupt. I know what you're going to say. Now you want to talk to someone, hey, hey, ah. Don't do that. It's a bad attitude. Okay? Avoid distraction. Four main types of distraction. Physical, mental, auditory. Okay? Here you get what it says. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go through that. Avoid distractions. Set listening goals. What does set listening goals help you prepare to get the most from a listening occasion goals goals one of the things i do is about goals i help youth 
set goals and they can see how they can achieve them. We live like grasshoppers most of the day. Now that we are out, uh, we don't come to college. We are all complaining. College, let's go to college. There are goals. Take advantage. You are not there. Why don't you keep uh, some you know, tomatoes in a pot that you can say, I'll be watering this and I'll be working on it one hour every day. See how what will happen after January. Look at, get some chicken. Keep feeding them every day one hour you are working with them. Keep saying I'm going to work on my English every time. Goals, goals. We lack goals. When you see Mark Zuckerberg, he became a billionaire in 21 years. Those are goals. Bill Gates. And you might say, well, that's not in Kenya. Already you're prejudging. Already you have a mindset that is not a success mindset, right? And you know when you have a success mindset, people will laugh at you because you'll have lofty ideas. Uh, I usually say, I usually have uh, scaring dreams because I know my God is omnipotent. My God is all-powerful. I don't know what your God is, then it, it might be very small. If he parted the Red Sea, if he actually resurrected Lazarus, what can he not do? That's why you need to set very lofty goals. But most of us are mediocre. And that's why, like when I work a little hard and push you a little hard, they're saying, oh, that Malimo wants to be seen. By who? For what? Yeah, God. I just want God to see me, nobody else. So I'm talking about goals because why we have a problem is we don't have goals. How, what's your goal for every day? How many hours do you want to work? When you wake up in the morning, what's your goal? Huh? Now, you come to listening because everything needs a goal. You need to set listening goals. When you go, like for example, when you come to the video like this, you say, I'm going to listen to that video. I want to come out have, to have listened to three main points, to five main points, to be able to recite the points from that. Those are goals. And you know when you set a goal, then there is the positive cycle. We looked at the self-concept, the self-esteem, the success model okay so setting listening goals helps you to prepare to get the most from a listening occasion what do you need and expect from the listening occasion okay ask yourself that what do i expect from dr mjomba's video if you're going there just to do it because most of you look already tired most of you look like it's such a big job yeah why did you come to college if you don't want to work huh i mean one question i ask you why did you even pass your exam if you come to college? Then stay. I don't, I, I don't understand why you come and say it's so difficult. Huh? This is, then you don't have any goals. Keep these goals in mind as you listen, all right? Okay? I want to get five points from today's video. I want to understand what listening is all about. Try to state your listening goals in a way that encourages action. In my colleague's presentation, I will learn the main steps in making chapatis. In Dr. Mjomba's video, I will learn three points about listening. In the next uh, video, I want to actually recite four things that were presented in that lecture. Number five, do not rehearse answers. Avoid rehearsing answers while the other person is talking. Be careful not to interrupt. It's not very good. Look for feelings that underlie the person's comment. Let go of being uncomfortable listening to a client's feeling or to the speaker's feeling. I've kept saying clients because I'm preparing you for the world of work. Remember, good listening skills include silence and intuition. See how straight their backs are? See how they are actually showing? I want to listen to They are not sitting sloppily. They are not lying down. They are not having, having their heads down. There is eye contact. There is all about good active listening. Listen for main ideas to ensure that you hear and retain the speaker's most important points. Try this strategy. Listen for the speaker's organizational pattern. Okay? Usually organizational patterns are like you can have problem, cause, solution. You can have chronological one, two, three. You can have spatial from the west, east, north. Those are organizational patterns, which we'll learn more when we are doing speech presentation. Knowing the sequence and structure of a speech makes it easy for you to understand and remember the content. Listen for introduction, transitions, and conclusion. Now that I have talked about listening, 
I'm going to talk about the strategies. Those are transition. Now that you've known what the problem is, uh, let me introduction, transition, and conclusion. Okay. In conclusion, I want to repeat what I have said. I've said one. Diabetes is caused by sedentary lifestyle. Two, it has no cure. Three, you just have to manage it, you know, to alert you to the main points. Most speakers will introduce their main points in the introductory remark. This gives you a chance to identify these points and focus on their discussion. Take notes on the speaker's main points. Take notes. That's why <coughs> don't go to any listening without a notepad to take not of the speaker's main points. Watch for non-verbal cues. Body language is an excellent source of information. Watch the speaker's stance and posture. Facial expression also provides cues. We've said these are culture specific, but it's important to look at them. Speakers who are committed to the material are more likely to display facial expressions that are consistent with their commitment to the message. Research indicates that if verbal and non-verbal messages are incongruent, the non-verbal cues are usually the more honest. So when you're listening to somebody, do not close your eyes. That's why you say have eye contact, look at their body language, look at how they are carrying themselves. Con men are very good in their language. They can rhyme the words, they can have fantastic phrases. The same with salesmen, but you need to look at their body. Body language will tell them, is this really genuine? Is it really something I want to do? Okay? So, watch for non-verbal cues. And basically, be present. Be present. Listening, as I said, is an active process. Okay? We've talked about the selective nature. Look at the selective nature. Understand people actually come from the known to the unknown. They also actually uh, will listen to things that touch on their background. They'll also listen to something that interests them, that they think it's important. What are the barriers? We've talked about the barriers to listening, prejudgment, which is a big, big one. I want you to actually work on prejudgment. Okay? Prejudgment will make uh, your world very small. If you prejudge, like you say, a certain ethnic group does that, those are the stereotypes. The uh, lecturers do this, it's a stereotype. Ladies do this, men are hyenas. Those are stereotypes. That's prejudgment. But that's why you've come to college. Get away from prejudgment, biasness, script writing, defensive listening. Laziness also is a very dangerous thing when it comes to listening. I've said it's an active process. You gotta work to listen. Okay? What are the strategies? Be open minded, but don't let your brains fall out. I gave an example where somebody, everything goes. No. Open-minded means don't, don't make assumptions yet. Come in with an open mind, but with a mind also that is ready to actually evaluate things from an informed perspective. Part of the problem we have is ignorance. You have nothing between the ears. You cannot make good decisions. That's why you need to actually read hard, have knowledge, understand stuff. That's when you can actually survive in this world. That's why you can negotiate. I've told you communication. Communication is all about reading, it's all about uh, comprehension, it's all about thinking. Whatever you are doing, if you don't have communication, you won't understand your physics, you won't understand your engineering. If you have no listening skills, then the work in TTU will be very, very difficult. Anyway, the strategy uh, finally is watch for the non-verbal cues. We've said those are more powerful body language. I want to give you a tip, guys, especially the young men. When you go and you're meeting a lady, make sure you also look at her. Some of the men are very shy and they don't look at the lady. Then you cannot actually really understand what is feeling. Sometimes the lady won't say anything, but you can see by the body cues, are they really excited? Is it nice? Is it good? During my days, ladies didn't talk much. They'll actually work on the flowers. They'll cut leaves or they might draw maps on the ground. You had to read that, you had to study that. Huh? And that's why you can see, uh, by the time I was getting to university, I was already well honed in my listening skills. Because you listen with your whole body. The non-verbal, the body language, the context. Where are we saying it? What is the noise around? Is this, is this conducive? This, should we use it? Alright? So, 
That is it for today, listening skills. What we're going to do next is conflict management and negotiation. We are almost actually, and uh, I'm hoping by the time we close in December, we'll have actually covered all the material that we have. Because remember, it's the skills I'm giving you, the practice is yours. I've said the only time you stop practicing all the skills I'll give you is when you're six foot under. The only thing that I see many students do, they think communication, you just do it and leave it apart, you know. Hey, I'm an engineer, that was just a common cause. Hey, I'm an accountant, that was a common cause. That's where you go wrong, because you need this all your life. I've said you need listening skills from the boardroom to the ballroom to the bedroom. In fact, for the young men, ladies like to be listened to. Usually on Sundays is my day I actually take to listen to Maria. And it is the day that I actually cook for her. When I'm cutting the onions, you'll find sometimes she comes and she actually hits me at the back. And I don't complain. I'm ready to listen. I'm saying, so what's up, baby? What are you saying? Oh, you know, you don't give me too much money these days. I say, baby, you know what? My wallet is your wallet. My wallet, take it, have it. Then I keep chopping the tomatoes, I'm there. Then she comes back and she actually says, I want to ask you something. I said, no problem, go listening. I'm not arguing, I'm not. Uh, uh, she says, you know, I'm finding that these days you don't take too much time for me. I stop everything, I turn around, I hug her. One, two, three, four, five kisses. And I say, how do you feel? Uh, listening skills. After two hours, the meal is ready. I've been there and we've been married for 61 years. It's because of listening, really, it's just listening. If you think that, well, a, fill, a, a fridge, a uh, theater, home theater, you, she's got cars, she's got kids, maybe 20, and you say, I give that lady everything. Why does she actually bother me? Wrong. Ladies like to be listened, and so do men. Everybody, we like to be listened to. Not to be heard, not to hear, not hearing, passing by. Quickly in the morning you are rushing to work. No, listening, saying, and you don't have to say, okay, talk, I'm listening. No, that's not also the same thing. Just be there. Don't argue. Just, just have a smile and let the person talk. Good conversationalists, good communicators are great listeners. That's the secret. That's the secret. All right, bye for now. We continue next class. Take care. Take care now. Good weekend. Bye-bye.